a fishing boat alone on the open sea. It's night time, visibility restricted by fog. Suddenly, the boat hits a rock. There's a hole in the hull. The boat fills with water. The skipper goes back into the cabin, gets the flare gun and fires. But before help arrives, the boat sinks and is dragged into the depths. The skipper trapped in the cabin. He has no chance. This kind of shipwreck happens all the time. But how do you survive such a terrifying scenario? To find out, we take to the water. The gravel lake of the Nordhausen Diving Centre. Water depth up to 40 metres. The ideal place to sink a ship under controlled conditions. And this is who we're going to save. Stuntman Matthias Schendel. His motto? The captain is always the last to leave a sinking ship. Such emergencies simply happen. Ships sink, whether at sea or on lakes, and I just want to find out what the proper way to behave is and how I can really free myself from this death trap. What obstacles are there? What do I have to do? Because I've never been in such a situation myself and I just want to find out what it's like today. First, we need a boat. For environmental reasons, the boat has been completely cleaned of oils and other liquids. the outboard motor has been removed. The most important part of the boat, the cabin. This is where the stuntman will be during the sinking process. Matthias familiarizes himself with the interior. There's a breathing mask at hand in case of emergency. My first impression of the boat is, of course, that it's a relatively small interior. So I'm sitting in here, I don't have many options. I'm right at the top, and the only way to get out of here is through this door here, and that's all I have. So if this way out is somehow blocked, or I can't get there while the boat is sinking, or afterwards, then I've lost. I'll be trapped in here, I've no chance of getting out, and that's getting to me up here a bit right now. Next step in the preparations for the experiment. In order to fill up with water, the boat needs a hole in the hull. The idea is the boat fills up through the stern and tilts backwards as it sinks. The bow of the boat at the front is the last part to sink. A hundred ton crane is used to put the boat onto the water. In an emergency, it can lift the boat out of the water within seconds. With the cabin full, it weighs about three tons. To prevent the crane from tipping over, additional weight has to be loaded onto it. That completes the preparations and we lift the boat above the lake's three degrees centigrade water. The depth at this point is 10 meters. In order to supply the stuntman with breathing air underwater, or to free him from the boat in an emergency, the experiment is accompanied by several safety divers. Despite all the safety precautions, it is and remains an experiment with an uncertain outcome. Yes, there's a thousand thoughts going through my head right now. I don't know what the boat will do, I've no idea if I can get into the breathing air supply, my face will get ice cold, then there'll be this breathing shock, but I have to suppress it to breathe as calmly as possible. I have to get my bearings in there. I could lose my bearings and then I have to get out of there. There are all these things swirling around my head because there's a huge amount of risk involved. The experiment begins. First attempt. How long does it take for a boat to sink? How does it feel to be trapped in the cabin of a sinking boat? Matthias is going to find out for us just how it feels. The safety divers get into position to be able to intervene immediately in an emergency. This is the scenario for the test. The boat fills with water but is still afloat. The crew put on life jackets in line with regulations. 
the skipper goes back into the cabin to fetch the flare gun. At that moment, the boat is pulled completely under the water. I've no idea when the water's really coming in over the stern, because the door in front of me is closed. A boat floats when its buoyancy force is greater than the force of its weight. I'm going to see if any water's coming in or going out. There's nothing yet. Now it feels relatively normal, just like normal sinking. Oh, the water's coming in relatively quickly now. The inflowing water reduces the buoyancy. Oh, the water's really forcing its way in now. If the buoyancy force is less than the weight force, the boat will sink. Oh, this doesn't look good. Eight minutes. That's how long the boat can manage to stay afloat. The stuntman is now getting scared. Now it's sinking, it's going down. The front two meters are not yet underwater, leaving the stuntman a small air pocket to breathe. But then, the full-up hull pulls the boat and Matthias into the depths. The stuntman gives a sign to the safety divers. His life's not in danger. His oxygen supply through the breathing mask is secured. The boat is hanging vertically in the lake. The only way out is through the door at the bottom. To be able to dive down, Matthias takes off his life jacket. The safety divers are with him. They guide the stuntman back to the surface. The entire sinking process took over nine minutes. Matthias was underwater for almost one and a half minutes, too long to survive. An untrained person can go a maximum of one minute without oxygen. It was really crazy how quickly the boat sank at the end. Well, then the doors opened and then the water really came gushing in. What was really scary and really terrible was when a little bubble formed at the top. And when I was hanging in there, I thought, there's still a small chance to be rescued, and suddenly it was gone and I was trapped. I have to say quite honestly that panic sets in there. It all happens so quickly and there's nothing else to do but get yourself out of the wreck. A short breather. The stuntman is about to descend into the threatening darkness of the water masses again. Because we still want to find out how we can free ourselves from this sinking coffin without a rescue diver. And in less than one minute. One minute that can make the difference between life and death. In 2012, more than 100 shipping accidents were reported in German waters. Recreational craft are most frequently involved in serious sailing accidents. Ten of the 100 shipping accidents ended in death and the loss of the vessel. Three of these ships were sailing under the German flag. But surely there must be a chance of surviving such an accident. To find out, Matthias is prepared to go down with the boat once again. In the next attempt, we'll first put the boat on the water and then let it sink, just as it did the very first time. That means it will go down slowly at first, but as soon as the water flows over the stern, it'll go pretty fast, and that's exactly when I'll try to work my way forward from my position here in the cabin against the incoming water, which really fills up the entire boat in seconds, and get out of the door here. But just like in real life, I'll have my life jacket on, which could give me some buoyancy against the roof, but whether I can really get out of there, I can't say yet. So that the stuntman can comment on the next attempt, he wears a full-face respiratory mask with a voice radio. Same scenario as in the first attempt. Water runs into the boat, life jacket on, back to the cabin to get the flare gun. The boat is pulled into the depths. Matthias has to try and fight his way out of the boat against the inflowing water. The water's already pouring in again. Matthias wants to try and get out of the cabin before it's completely submerged.
tent starts now. Oh, here comes the water. The water's coming. Oh, oh God. And the life jacket's pushing me back right away too. The boat is almost vertical. The buoyancy of the life jacket is too strong and pushes the stuntman upwards. Ah, I can't get down at all. I'm trying to push myself down with the jacket on. Oh God, I can't get any further. It's pulling me upwards. After one and a half minutes, Matthias gives up. He takes off the life jacket and only now can he dive down to the door. Okay, now I've done it. I'm through the door. The attempt has failed. By the time I'd even got the doors open, I was already underwater, and then getting out was completely impossible because the water had already flowed so far past me that the buoyancy of the life jacket was brutal. Plus the force from the incoming water, I had no chance at all, nothing. In this special shipwreck case, the life jacket proved to be Matthias's undoing. Nevertheless, in a shipwreck, life jackets are the most important aid to saving lives. But there must be a way to effect a rescue. Third attempt. We get the boat back into starting position. In this final part of the experiment, the stuntman wants to find the direct route to the water surface. Through this window. The scenario remains the same. To get the flare gun, the skipper goes back into the cabin. At that moment, the boat is dragged into the depths. We join him after Matthias has already freed himself from his life jacket. Again, the boat is upright in the water. The stuntman reaches for the signal pistol. His idea, maybe he can use it to smash the window. After about 15 seconds in the water, the stuntman has broken the window pane. Matthias squeezes through the narrow opening. He did it. After 39 seconds, Matthias is back on the surface of the water. Someone holding their breath for that long would be possible. The experiment is a success. Well, if I have the chance to break the glass with a heavy, hard object like a hammer or something similar, then I really would choose this method immediately. Smash the window right away, remove as many shards as possible, and get through it as quickly as you can. If I hurt myself in the process, I'm prepared to accept that, because the boat will sink even faster. Once the water has reached the window that's now broken, it will flow in through the window as well. But it's a second possible way out which is also more direct than the door. Our conclusion, if a boat's sinking, always wear a life jacket and stay on deck to avoid being dragged to the bottom with the boat.